Hello YouTube, Gamer Dad here. Uh, this will be the 11th video in our series. Uh, what we did last video is uh, we revamped our asteroid class to make it work for a, with a list. Um, this, you're going to see why this is going to be a lot cooler um, by the end of this video. Uh, and another thing I wanted to mention, when you get to this point in a game, you're like, man, the possibilities are endless. Now that we've put lists in, you know, I'm starting to think like, man, we can do a lot of cool stuff, you know, um, once we get our spaceships flying around, man, and we get um, our scores set up. And uh, just looking over what we have so far, this is a good base, and, and I'm sure you guys are seeing it too, where, wow, um, we got the basics pretty much. We know how to set up a class correctly. Um, we're starting to get into lists here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we can do with our game. And you know what? And uh, later on in the tor tutorial series, we're going to get into states too. So we can put our main menu in and all that cool stuff, and then you can you can you know start getting into your your Photoshop or your Paint and creating your own uh, main menu screens and stuff like that. But I, I'm getting off topic here, but I'm I'm getting excited for uh, where this tutorial is headed, and there's a lot of possibilities uh, in short. So uh, with that, uh, like I said last video, we revamped our asteroid class. Um, in this video, we got to change uh, some things in our game one and add a new method uh, to make this work with our asteroid class because if you build this now um, and you try you're not even gonna be able to do it because uh, there's already errors here and um, you're noticing some of these here and uh, as you go down so um, with that uh, everyone hop into your game one.cs and let's start making our changes okay uh, first of all we can delete this line here because uh, we're not gonna be just um, instantiating an asteroid right away when the game starts we're gonna do it uh, through method and adding it to our list so you can delete that um, so ba basically once you delete that it's gonna say wait a minute there isn't any asteroid object in the game anymore so how are we gonna load its content how are we gonna update it and how are we gonna draw it well what we're gonna do is delete all those lines too so um, you can up go into your uh, into your load content delete the asteroid load content go into your update uh, we're in the game one.cs here just as a reminder uh, delete your asteroid update and go ahead and delete your asteroid that draw and that should take care of um, some of the the errors that we have. Obviously, there's uh, still one more uh, because we do need to change. Uh, actually, if we build this, yeah, it should succeed because we don't have any more asteroid code in the game one.cs. Okay, so if we run this now, um, there's not going to be any more asteroid. It's just going to be our ship because we deleted the ins the object of our asteroid right here. Okay, so from here, uh, we're going to be adding a few things. Um, first of all, let's go up here and uh, we'll add our list to hold our asteroids in. So it's going to be a list, um, type asteroid, um, and we're, gonna, we're just going to call it asteroid list, and that's going to equal a new um, list asteroid, okay, and we'll comment that. Uh, just so we don't start getting sloppy again. Okay, um, we can comment this too. Our player and starfield objects. Okay. Uh, next step, uh, we already deleted all of our uh, our previous asteroid stuff in here, so we don't need to worry about taking that out. Next spot you're going to want to go is down to your update. So go into your update in your game1.cs. And uh, what we're going to do in here, like we handled the bullets before, we're going to use a for each statement. So we're going to say for each uh, asteroid. And we're just going to say A, asteroid A. And you know you can put this as whatever you want. Basically this is just saying for every asteroid, and we're going to give it giving those each asteroid a name. I'll just call it A. Um, an asteroid list. We're going to do the following. Okay. Get my notes out here. Um, and since this is our update function in our main, all we're going to do is say A update. And it's going to be game time. So what this is doing is saying for every asteroid that's going to be in our asteroid list, we're going to call our, our asteroid update function, which is in our asteroid, which is our function here. So, and what that's going to be handling is creating a bounding box, setting movement, um, and making the the uh, 
asteroid rotate. Okay. Okay, so back to our game one.cs, and we'll comment that. For each asteroid in our list, our asteroid list, update. No, we'll just say update it. I guess that's what it's doing, so. Okay. Um, and next, what we're going to have to do is we're going to create a new method in here. So we can go, I've got a lot of spaces in here. So we can go uh, below our draw method in our game1.cs and create a new method. And it's just going to be called um, load asteroids. And we'll name it. It's going to be a public void. And we're just going to, we're going to call that load asteroids. Okay. And what this function is going to be handling is it's going to be creating our asteroids for us uh, and uh, setting the random positions for them on the screen and adding them to our list. Okay, so um, we're going to start with setting. We're going to create uh, two uh, two int variables in here. It's going to be an int. Um, we're going to call it rand y. We're going to call and then we're just going to say random. Oh, and you know what we forgot to do? Forgot to go up into our game one cs. Go up to the top. And then we need to create uh, a, an instance of random up here. So um, you can just go on your sprite batch and just say um, random, and we'll call it random, equals new random. Okay. Now we can go back down uh, to our load asteroids um, method that we just started. And now we can say um, uh, int rand y will equal uh, random dot next. And we're going to generate a number between negative 600 and negative 50. Okay? And then we're going to have, I'll explain this in a second. And we're going to create another int, which will be random x will equal random dot next. And we're going to generate a random number on the x axis between 0 and 750. Okay? And uh, just like our last video when we were in the asteroid class and we created um, our randoms in here, uh, it's the same. Uh, same deal is we're going to create a random number on our x-axis between 0 and 750 and a random number uh, uh, on our y between negative 600 which is way up off the top of our screen and negative 50 which is 50 pixels off the top of our screen okay and we're going to be calling the load asteroids function in the update function so this is going to get updated every frame so every frame that we're playing the game it's going to generate a new random number every time okay and then so next is going to be an if statement so we're going to say if um, and this is where we can decide how many asteroids we want our list to be able to hold. Okay, so we're going to say, and I'm just going to start with five. If asteroid list dot count is less than five, oops, then we're going to do is we're going to add a new asteroid. So we're going to say asteroid list dot add, and then what we're going to add is a new asteroid. And then uh, notice in our asteroid class, remember we changed what perimeters this, this is going to take. It's going to take a texture and a position. Okay, so the texture is going to be content.load. It's going to be a texture 2D. And it's going to be um, asteroid. So um, and the reason for that is in our asteroid class over here, in our load content, see we're adding a, a texture here, which uh, actually we could probably... We could probably remove this line. And you know what? I'm going to comment it out for now just to see if it affects it at all. So we could probably comment that out because we're not setting the texture within this class anymore. We're actually setting it um, out here in our load asteroids function. Okay? So the first parameter was taking a texture, which we just did. The second is taking a position. So the position is going to be a new vector 2. And we're going to set it to our, our random variables. So it'll be random x and rand y. Okay, and make sure you get all your uh, brackets closed there at the end. It's going to take three. Okay, so uh, to go over this again, we'll, we'll comment it. Creating random variables for our x and y um, axis, axes, axes of our uh, asteroids. Okay. And then down here, what we're going to say is um, if there are less than five asteroids on the screen, 
then create more until there is five again. All right. Just trying to put that in the layman's terms so you guys can kind of understand what it's what it's doing. Um, okay. So next, we're gonna make a for statement. So for uh, just another basic for statement here. Um, int i e int i equals zero. Um, and then we're gonna say um, if i is less than asteroid list dot count, then i plus plus. And what this is saying is um, if if the current index in the asteroid list count is um, is if i is less than the asteroid list count, then keep going up. Okay. Um, and what we're gonna do in here, we're gonna say if um, not asteroid list um, with uh, the index i um, is visible. I'll explain this in a second. Then we do the following. We want to asteroid list dot remove at um, the index and then i negative negative. Okay, so this is basically what we did in our bullet class. It's almost the exact same thing, right? So um, what this is saying is uh, we're. Gonna